uh, welcome to the New Bedford Whaling Museum. It's my great pleasure to introduce the president of Cape Verde to the community of New Bedford. Welcome, Mr. President. You visited us some years ago, and we're absolutely delighted and thrilled that you've chosen to come here today. We're very honored, and we're very pleased to report that there's been a great deal of progress as we've worked between the museum and also the city of New Bedford and the great offices, the good offices of the consulate, uh, over the past few years to develop a number of programs. And we hope to talk to you a little bit about that today. And so we'll move right on with the program. I'll be your MC, and the mayor will say a few words, and then our representative, Tony Cabral, will speak a little bit. And then I'd like our new chairwoman of the New Bedford Whaling Museum, Carol Taylor, to come forth to say some words. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the mayor of New Bedford, John Mitchell. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Um, so I, I, will, I will keep it brief. I know the president is on a, a tight schedule today, but I wanted to say more than anything else, welcome. Welcome back. Um, yeah, we, it's great to see you again, Mr. President. And uh, we here in New Bedford uh, tend to see things in New, New Bedford-centric terms. We think that uh, we, we still maintain that New Bedford is the Cape Verdean capital of America. And, uh, as we saw in the map uh, downstairs uh, that depicts where all the whale kills were around the world in the 19th century, it's, it becomes evident uh, immediately why there's such a strong connection between Cabo Verde and New Bedford. It's because it, fortuitously there were lots of whales there and folks from New Bedford found them and then they found uh, those beautiful ten islands and, and, uh, and, and so then the rest is history. And they're, uh, opened up uh, immigration to the United States and the, uh, uh, the development of a Cape Verdean community here, which has contributed to the strength of New Bedford and its endurance over the years in so many ways, and we're very proud of that. Um, yeah, we, um, uh, we're very proud also of uh, the continuing uh, relationship, continuing strengthening relationship of, uh, of the islands and uh, the city of New Bedford. Uh, New Bedford uh, over the last few years has sought to uh, strengthen both its commercial and cultural bonds with the islands and I really want to take uh, the opportunity to thank uh, your administration uh, and the folks at the Whaling Museum, Carol and James and the entire board for, uh, for all of their work in, uh, on the museum in South Vicente. Uh, it's a really a wonderful opportunity uh, to share something of uh, one another with one another. Uh, but also a way of uh, uh, creating more opportunities like this when we can share ideas and tell stories uh, and reconnect and reconnect in ways that might lead to business opportunities and we're as uh, leaders of our communities we're always interested in that but more importantly uh, those opportunities come when uh, we've already we've built the bonds of friendship and, uh, and that's what's very important to us so I want to say thank thank you again I want to thank uh, also um, uh, the city's tourism director, Dagny Ashley, who's here. Dagny played a, uh, a strong role in the, uh, the delegation uh, to Sao Vicente last year in uh, helping get the museum uh, off the ground up and running. And uh, I want to also thank Tony Cabral, who's uh, at, at the state level has been a strong supporter of all of these efforts. Um, we, uh, we, we are very proud of our deep and rich um, Cape Verdean heritage in, in our city. New Bedford is a uh, stands out uh, in a, an America of melting pots. This is a this is a true melting pot, and um, the Cape Verdean, Cape Verdean community continues to contribute uh, in countless ways today. And uh, it's it's so helpful to have the connection to uh, to the homeland as well. Uh, as on our way up here, um, I think the president's uh, um, curiosity for uh, history was uh, wedded. Uh, by walking by the panels as well as the map and other uh, exhibits. And so in order to uh, you know, further uh, fortify that, that curiosity, we have a little gift for you, which I think a lot of folks in the audience will recognize as a um, spinner. Um, just, uh, just come on up, Mr. President. We have for you 
a um, thank you. We know we know that we know that you are a, a history buff, and folks here will recognize um, the Spinner publication, a two-volume history of New Bedford, which obviously has, a, as we all know, has a, a big Cape Verdean component. Um, because Cape Verdeans have played such a, an instrumental role in the city's success over the last 150 years. So uh, we give that to you with pride and, you. and affection and uh, with uh, hope for much. continued strong relations. Okay. Thank you. Dear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Oh, the, not so fast. The, what is this? Music. music. Cape Verdean music, yeah? Oh, <laughs> well, by God. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great time. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, perhaps before you come forward, Tony, just a couple of people to recognize. I would like uh, to acknowledge the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Communities. It's a great pleasure to have you here. We are honored to have the ambassador uh, to the U.S. in Cape Bird. It is a great pleasure to have you here, sir. <clears throat> there are some city councilors. I see Dana Ribera and Joe Lopes are here. Thank you. Two weeks ago, we signed an important protocol with Bridgewater State University and representing Bridgewater, Jean Rosa, if you could stand up, Jean. And perhaps most importantly, working till midnight last night just for you, mm. translating an educational program into Creole, Sueli Pierre and Jessica Silva. Would you stand up, please? Uh, 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 Mr. Mr. President, you'll have to tell us whether their Creole is tip top. <laughs> so now, with no further ado, Representative Cabral, when you come forward to the podium. Well, good afternoon once again, Mr. President. Welcome to New Bedford. Bem-vindo New Bedford, uh, to the, what I usually call the 11th island of Cape Verde. A décima primeira ilha de Cabo Verde. As you know, and you will notice not only here around us, uh, all the images of Cabo Verde that are so familiar to you and so familiar to all of us in New Bedford. And this great work that the museum has done, really, since James has been here, uh, has been tremendous because the, he has brought the museum to the people and the people to the museum. So today's museum, the Willie Museum, is a place where you can see all the influences of the Cape Verdean American community, of the Cape Verdean folks who came over and, and actually came to, this, to, to work in this city. And their value and importance in the Willie industry to today's industries. And uh, you can see here, as they used to arrive, on the Willie industry, and then later on, how they arrived on the Ernestina. And as you know, this is the home port of the Ernestina, and the Ernestina right now is actually up in Maine, being uh, all restored. Uh, it's a, re a restoration, uh, which is a partnership between, between uh, the state of Massachusetts and private partners uh, that will, um, once it's done, will be around uh, six to eight million dollars investment and hopefully by then the Ernestina will be able to someday soon sail back into Praia uh, on July 5th uh, to celebrate uh, the independence of Cape Verde. And that's one of the dreams of, of this community. That's one of the dreams of this community. It's one of the dreams of the, uh, if I may say, the, the Cape Verdean Advisory Committee to this museum. Oh, many of the members are here, the former chairs are here as well. And I'm not going to speak for them, but I want to tell you that they have done tremendous work with this museum to make sure uh, the Cape Verdean culture was reflected, the labor of the Cape Verdean community was reflected in this museum. Um, I want you to know, not only in this museum, but as you know, as you walk throughout this city, throughout this community, uh, you, will see, you will see the influence of the Cape Verdean community in, uh, here in New Bedford, in every walk of life. We are very proud uh, of uh, the Cape Verdean American community here. We're very proud of those Cape Verdeans uh, that have come 
and made this city a much richer place for all of us to live and work and raise our families. Their marks are everywhere as you walk through the streets of this community. As, as it is, you know, uh, uh, if you visit, as I have visited and other members here have visited Cape Verde, you also can see New Bedford in Cape Verde. The mark of this city that as they return uh, to particular places in, in Cape Verde, I have to tell you that, I've, uh, that I have seen that both uh, in Praia, in Fogo, as you can see the image of Fogo here on one of the eruptions of the 1800s. Uh, I just visited last December and had the pleasure to go visit the last eruption or the, the, the lava of the last eruption uh, a couple of years back. Um, but if you go to Bravo in particular, uh, and I told the story earlier at the uh, Cape Verde Association, uh, one of the trips that I, we made to, to Brava, as we are getting on the ferry in Fogo, and uh, we're a little late, the plane was a little late getting there, so the ferry had been waiting for us. So we walked in, they could tell we were quote unquote Americans, and the lady that was sitting there patiently waiting for the ferry, uh, she said, are you, she said obviously, Creole, she said, are you from New Bad Fat? Yeah. And, and, uh, and I said, I am. I am from New Bad Fat. She said, well, I have family in New Bad Fat. So as you can see, and as you walk through Bravo, through Fogo, and other parts of Cape Verde, you see also the imprint of this community there. So it's really a great connection that has made us richer here, and I think it has made also the nation of Cape Verde rich as well with all the, with this interaction. So, mais uma vez um obrigado, um prazer estar cá conosco novamente, uh, visitar a décima primeira ilha de Cabo Verde, uh, ver a influência da nossa da comunidade cabo-verdiana nesta cidade e nesta região, veio enriquecer, veio enriquecer sem dúvida as nossas vidas, enriquecer as nossas comunidades, enriquecer a nossa maneira de viver, né? Aqui e, 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 portanto, hoje somos mais ricos devido à influência e da integração da comunidade cabo-verdiana em New Bedford e na nossa região. Como vai ver em Brockton, como vai ver em, em Fox Point, como vai ver em Boston, uh, é uma comunidade extremamente respeitada, uma comunidade que sabe estar no, e sabe fazer o seu lugar, é uma comunidade que sabe dar para trás tão bem, como o Sr. Presidente mencionou, imensos veteranos americanos uh, são de descendência cabo-verdiana e neste Nesta cidade, nós fazemos, uma vez por ano, durante o feriado, nós chamamos Memorial Day Weekend, há uma, há uma cerimónia que se faz uh, no cemitério, e essa cerimónia é para, para elogiar e prestar tributo a esses mesmos veteranos uh, americanos de descendência cabo-verdiana, nós fazemos isso todos os anos. Para, para nós é uma maneira também de uh, lembrar e, 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 e de... E, prestigiar, né? porque muitos deles darão a sua vida para a gente continuar a viver livres e frutar desta democracia. Portanto, mais uma vez um grande obrigado e bem-vindo a New Bedford. Thank you, Tony. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> uh, I believe we too have a gift for the president and. Uh, and why don't we hold on that when Cal comes up. And uh, Mr. President, there are a couple of images over here to my right, and this was working with uh, uh, your staff and the Ministry of uh, uh, Culture, and we were setting up an exhibit in San Vicente, uh, which is in the middle picture here. This is a photograph of San Nicolau, and the museum trustees made a generous donation of about 50 items or so. I see. Uh, there was a gift of about 50 items or so that we donated to the museum, to the memory houses in Cape Verde. Uh, directly behind me of significance and also to my left is a panorama which is 1,275 feet long, but many of the sections speak to Cape Verde. And we're restoring that now, and it's important to have a visual record of Fogo, and of course we all know the devastation that happened two years ago in Fogo, but here it is from 1848, uh, remembering that, that particular activity. And to my left, this is the island of Brava, 
and you can see many Cape Verdeans walking down the hills and they're getting on board the whale boats to come to America. So to tell us more and present a gift, I'd like to invite Carol Taylor, chair of the Whaling Museum, to come forward. Dr. Carol Taylor. Thank you. And welcome, President Fonseca. It's wonderful to have you back here within two years and to be able to show you a little bit about how the museum has grown and expanded. The Board of Trustees, as you know, sets the strategic di direction and oversees the mission of the museum. And as Tony said it better than anybody else, um, Cape Verde has been a very important part of that mission. And to see what we have been able to do um, with the ideas that came out of the 2014 protocol has been very, very exciting. And I think we need to thank for that the Cape Verdean Advisory Committee, who really have led the way in turning the vision of the protocol from 2014 into the reality. So I'd like to recognize and thank all of the members of the committee who are here, and especially thank Jean Montero and Trisha Andrade, who have led that effort for the last five years. Would you stand? Thank you. And I'd also like to acknowledge um, Gunga Tabaris and Jack Liveramento, who are taking on that role. So, uh, as James mentioned, uh, we signed recently a second protocol with Bridgewater State University, and that fits into the strong educational mission of the, of the museum. Um, the efforts of the advisory committee to date culminated in early 2016 in opening a whaling exhibit in Salvicente, and that details the role that Cape Verdeans played in the Yankee whaling. And that is a starting point. Now, with the Bridgewater State University partnership, we are going to be able to develop structured school materials in Creole for use in the museum. And we have a prototype, and James again called out the two apprentices who did this. So we have the prototype materials to share with you and they will, I'm sure, need a little brushing up, but we look forward to doing that. And there are several other projects I'm happy to announce. In addition to developing the school curricula in Creole, the museum is launching a new website in Portuguese, which will hold a lot of the educational material we've been developing over the last couple of years, so there's content for teachers to use in the schools. We will be welcoming the historian Jose Cabral to New Bedford this fall to help deepen our understanding and give us some new ideas. And in 2017, a second outpost of the Whaling Museum will open in San Nicolau. So we are carrying this project forward with your support and with the support of the committee. And it's, it's very exciting and I look forward to the growth and the partnership between Cape Verde and uh, New Bedford. And in recognition of your visit today, we would like to give you a copy of our latest publication. Thank you. Two other things to carry home. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Perhaps with no further ado, but if everybody could stand and welcome President Fonseca to the podium. President Fonseca. Te agradeço as palavras muito simpáticas do Mayor Mitchell, do Presidente do Museu e da Presidente do Conselho de Administração, do State Representativo Tony Cabral 
e tudo amigos que se ali presente. É um grande prazer para mim como chefe de Estado de Cabo Verde, sem esse museu. É um é um local cheio de história de relações entre cabo-verdianos e americanos. Desde que me é menino, New Bedford entra na minha memória, na minha imaginário. Uh, minha avó, minhas tios, uh, oh, minha mãe, está a falar-me sempre na, na New Bedford. Na crioula, você falava New Bedford. E New Bedford. familiares de meu vivem na New Bedford. Muitos de meus pais vivem aqui na cidade de New Bedford. E alguns ainda vivem aqui na New Bedford. Uh, inclusive, um falei um bocadinho, minha avó, minha avó, minha avó materno, vive mais de 60 anos na New Bedford. E, e mora com 90 tal anos ali na New Bedford. Não tem que eu tio, sobrinhos, primos ali na New Bedford. Então, a cidade que sempre anda na minha imaginação, na minha memória. É difícil falar de, de Cabo Verde, essa história, sem falar de Estados Unidos e de New Bedford. Uh, então, o Museu de Baleia tem muito a ver com o Cabo Verde. Ora, como é que as imagens ali? Eu estou a pedaços de história do Cabo Verde. Há uh, bocadinho estou a para aquele The Packet Trade and the Ernestina. E me deu um vista de olhos para o texto. And I kind of browsed through the text. Uh, and I saw that there is a reference. Uh, Captain Enrique Mendes. That talks about Capitão uh, Captain Enrique Mendes. Enrique Mendes é meu tio avô. It's my uh, great grandma. Uh, uh, proprietário da Ernestina, né? Uh, quando era estudante de ensino primário. When I was at the elementary school. Então viajava várias vezes por ano na Ernestina. Até porque era mais barato porque ainda pagava bilhete. Então conheço vários capitães da Ernestina. E é por isso que um viagem hoje da Ernestina para Cabo Verde. Seria uma espécie de de regresso a memórias do passado. Ernestina é nome de de um tia de meu. Tia Bia. O nome é Maria Ernestina. Maria Ernestina. And they call the Bia. Uh, protocolo entre o museu e Cabo Verde também é muito, é muito importante. It's very important that we have this protocol between Cape Verde and the museum. E esse protocolo com uh, o Bridgeport uh, Water University. The Bridgewater State University. Uh, então fica satisfeito que I am very pleased to hear about foi previsto uma exposição para o seu Nicolau. Because uh, uh, the fact also that there is a, a, another exhibit to be uh, in, uh, inaugurated in the island of São Nicolau. Talvez fosse bom Uh, num outro Maybe ano, no futuro, fazer exposição ou na Fogo ou na Brava? Porque há ilhas que têm que ver com, so com pesca de baleia e vinho de cabo-verdianos para, para New Bedford. And the, uh, the 
beginning of the immigration of Cape Verdeans to New Bedford. Teria um simbolismo muito especial. Palavras que eu falei, acho que é suficiente. Agradeço muito a recepção que se faz ali agora. E felizmente que eu me dei a segunda vez ali ao museu. Desse vez ele fica muito mais bem impressionado. I think I'm much better impressed this time. Pa grandeza e dimensão do museu. The dimension and the the grandeza. The 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 size of this museum. It's not just size and what it means in terms of structure. The greatness. Perfect. Então, e uns palavras de perspectiva que os dois jovens se lê. I want to thank especially those young people that are here. Que se fazer, se 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 fazer esse trabalho. E tem tudo pessoas que se trabalham ali, se fazem estágios ali no museu. E também todas as pessoas que você convida aqui para o museu para aprender. Está ali no museu, é assim, está na Cabo Verde. Being here at the museum kind of feels like being in Cabo Verde a little bit. E para terminar mesmo. And to end, now really I'm going to end. Então reitera uma coisa que me falou um bocadinho. I want to say something that I said before. Cavaleiros Estados Unidos estão unidos por laços de história e cultura extremamente fortes e humanos, laços humanos. Are connected by very strong ties, not just cultural and historical, but also human ties. Relações entre dois governos têm sido sempre bom, boas relações. Relationship between the two governments have been always very good, excellent relations. O estado de Massachusetts, o estado de Rhode Island, tem relações muito boas com Cabo Verde. Mas talvez essa relação devia ser mais forte ainda. Então, chama teria todo o sentido, todo o simbolismo político, que essa amizade, essa história comum essa cultura comum se traduzisse não ir de mais alto figura americana está é Cabo Verde é por isso que a pergunta tem feito para presidente dos Estados Unidos ter de ver de visita a Cabo Verde that the president of the United States should have a responsibility the duty to visit Cabo Verde isso mesmo foi o Presidente Obama há cerca de um ano e tal. Escrever-lhe um bilhetinho com a minha fraca em inglês. Escrever-lhe um bilhetinho na cimeira de chefe de Estado da África. Como eu estava ali lá, eu me mandei um bilhetinho. Depois de fazer um discurso muito bonito sobre o Cabo Verde. E depois de fazer um discurso muito bonito sobre o Cabo Verde. Sobre a democracia de Cabo Verde. Sobre a democracia de Cabo Verde. Então, o Felma, ele tem que ir para Cabo Verde. Você tem que ir para Cabo Verde. Mas para ser um jeito difícil, ele vai. Eu acho que vai ser difícil para ele ir agora. Mas o próximo presidente dos Estados Unidos vai ir. O próximo presidente dos Estados Unidos, nós vamos fazer que ele vai. Obrigado muito. Ou ela. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for those very kind remarks. And well, um, perhaps, Mayor, we can make a delegation and take a start in this trip next year. How about this? Now, we're going to try to do uh, something a little complicated. I'd like museum staff to come up here and help. We'd like to take a group photograph uh, with Fogo as a backdrop. And I would like to ask the President to come forward. But I'd like everybody to come forward.
Real men know that getting tested is the way to take care of their families. That's why real men wear gowns. For a list of the tests you need, go to ahrq.gov.